Hello and welcome. This is another video in the series about what can be published in the medical literature. Clinicians in OBGYN will find it useful to understand how they can contribute to the medical literature. Generally, letters to the editor requires an understanding of the topic and of research. If you are interested in writing such letters, it would be useful to read letters to the editor in journals so that you can understand perspectives and points of view. The definition for a letter to the editor includes a short piece of written communication addressed to the editor of a medical journal, which is in print or has online access. It is typically written and submitted for publication in the editorial section of the publication. Letters to the editor provide a forum for individuals to express their opinions, share feedback, or comment on issues which have been covered in previous publications. There are some special features regarding a letter to the editor. And these are as follows. The letter should be brief, concise, and to the point. It will be typically limited to a few hundred words to ensure that the letter can be easily read and accommodated. The letter often has a very clear purpose such as expressing agreement or disagreement with a previously published article or sharing a personal experience which is related to the topic of interest. It may highlight a particular issue or provide the feedback on the publication itself. The letters to the editor are typically written in response to specific articles editorials, opinion pieces, or other content which has previously been published. This may reference the original article or issue being addressed to provide a perspective or opinion on it. The letter is usually signed by the author who may provide their name, their affiliation to a certain institution, and other contact information such as email address and telephone number. The letter will be subject to editorial review by the publication staff and only those letters will be selected which are relevant, are clear, coherent, civil and adhere to the publication's guidelines and standards. If selected for publication, the letter is typically printed in the editorial section of the publication, along with other letters that have been received. Depending on the publication policies, authors may receive notification if their letter is selected for publication. Readers may also have the opportunity to respond to published letters with their own letters to the editor. The authors must disclose any potential conflicts of interest that could bias their opinions or influence their interpretation of the published work. The letter should adhere to the journal's specific submission guidelines regarding how it is formatted, how the references have been put in, what is the word count, or any other requirements. So why do journals publish letters to the editor and how do they contribute to the medical literature? So it's quite interesting to note that letters to the editor provide the platform for readers to engage with the publication and contribute to public discourse on a wide range of topics. Otherwise, you can possibly discuss such things in your department or with friends or colleagues 
but this allows you a wider forum on which you can talk about your opinions about a certain publication. They offer feedback to the publication's editors and staff, helping them to gauge opinions, interests, and concerns. They also facilitate dialogue and exchange of ideas among readers, fostering a sense of community and participation within the publication's audience. Overall, the letters play an important role in promoting free expression, encourage engagement, and enrich debate within the medical community. However, medical journals face a lot of challenges for publishing such letters. And these challenges are that the editors may receive numerous letters and they have space constraints, constraints so they often limit the numbers that can be published. The editors will carefully select and prioritize letters based on the potential to contribute to the ongoing dialogue within the medical community. The author faces the challenge that they must ensure their letter will be able to compete with other submissions. They can do this by making sure that they follow all the requirements that have been put down by the journal and by crafting a very clear and compelling argument in a concise format. Letters to the editor are often written in response to publications in the journal. Authors have to submit their letters in a timely manner to address the topic while it is still of interest to readers. Delays in submission or publication may diminish the relevance and impact of the letter. They should present a balanced viewpoint and engage in a positive and a constructive dialogue, even when there is disagreement or dis criticism. The author of the letter must adhere to the principles of professionalism and civility, avoiding personal attacks or inflammatory language. Maintaining a respectful tone while expressing dissenting opinions is a challenge and the authors have to comply to this challenge. Medical journals will face their own discretion in selecting, editing, and formatting the letters to, for publication. Authors must accept that their letters may undergo some editing for clarity, brevity, or compliance with editorial guidelines. The editors of the journal may also choose not to publish the letter if it does not meet the journal's standards or is deemed inappropriate for publication. There are certain challenges which are faced by the authors, and you have to consider these seriously if you are thinking of writing a letter to the editor. The authors need to understand that the such kind of a publication will have a limited impact in terms of citation and in terms of its importance for their promotions. Other types of articles, such as original research or reviews, may have a more higher impact as compared to the letter to the editor. The other challenge is that once a letter has been written, there may be a response to the letter, and so you need to engage in further discussion and provide additional clarification or evidence to support your argument. Despite these challenges, letters to the editor provide a valuable platform for authors to engage with the medical community, to express their viewpoint, and to contribute to ongoing discussions and debates within the field. So considering all the challenges, why do journals want to publish letters to the editor? They want to do that because this engagement can foster a sense of community among the readers and enhance their connection to the journal. The, these letters will also stimulate discussion and debate on important topics or controversies within the field of medicine. By publishing these letters, the editors of the journal demonstrate the journal's commitment 
to transparency, openness, and responsiveness to readers' feedback. If the, uh, these letters are well written and relevant, the editor can attract readership and in increase the visibility and the impact of the journal. Often such letters will, uh, will have a rapid and accessible mean of communication for researchers and for clinicians. The publisher may also have concern about the quality and the relevance of the letter as it may not undergo the same level of peer review or editorial scrutiny as research articles. As the letter to the editor will reflect a personal opinion or bias or agenda of the author may creep in. And that can be of concern because it will not provide objective or evidence-based analysis. This can diminish the credibility and the reliability of the content, particularly if authors have conflicts of interest or undisclosed biases. Going through the letters to the editor, the journal editors may find it difficult to review for the publication process, and this may interrupt or disrupt the editorial workflow of the journal, particularly if there is high volume of submission or if letters require additional fact checking or verification. Risk of controversy is also present, as mentioned earlier, because certain topics may be contentious or there may be too much criticism. And the, the, the journal or the, the edit editor may face a backlash from these publications. So this is an example of a letter to the editor, which has been written by two authors and has been published in the Journal of the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Pakistan. If you are interested, you should look up this, uh, this letter to the editor. And it is very interesting that in this particular letter, the authors have decided to write about education and facilitation in dentistry. And they have given some very good ideas of adapting fresh and different innovations for the ongoing teaching style so that students can stay focused, connected, and more attentive towards gaining knowledge. So this is a very interesting letter because it is not written in response to any publication, but it is just a fresh viewpoint which has been presented in the um, journal so that other uh, teachers of dentistry can see this letter and see that the that uh, the authors have uh, and other people like them have a demand for such a kind of changes in the curriculum and in the teaching style. This is another letter that has been published in the Journal of the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Pakistan. And um, in this particular um, letter, the authors have actually written about a, a recent article that was published in the same journal about urinary tract infections in renal transplant patients by myroides species. And this was a case report from Pakistan, and uh, they have given a lot of very good ideas to the authors and to the journal about the investigation that was carried out in this particular patient and suggestions about advancement of future research endeavors exploring the outcomes of such conditions. So such, such uh, reading of such articles and reading of such letters of, uh, to the editor can give you a lot of good ideas about uh, the kind of topics that are relevant and of interest to the medical community. So ending this video, I would like to make an important announcement, which has been released by the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Pakistan. The college has now started a companion journal of the JCPSP, which is the official journal of the CPSP. They have launched a journal by the name of JCPSP Case Reports. This provides a greater opportunity for doctors in OBGYN and other doctors to submit case reports, which will be more easily accepted because of the greater amount of space that is now available through this additional journal. With this, we come to the end of the video. If you like this video and if you would like to support this channel, then please press the subscribe button. 
press like, comment, and share with colleagues and friends, and press the bell icon so that you can be notified of future videos. Thank you and goodbye.